Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to AP U.S. History, as we look today at events in the 1990s. In fact, all the way back to 1988, when Ronald Reagan, Vice President George Herbert Walker Bush, was elected President of the United States, defeating the Governor of Massachusetts, Michael Dukakis, in a landslide, 426 to 111 in the Electoral College. Bush was a decorated naval aviator in World War II, shot down off the coast of Okinawa, and would be the last World War II veteran to serve as president, every president from Eisenhower through Bush being a veteran of World War II, although only Bush and Kennedy really saw combat. Bush had also been the first envoy to Communist China in the mid-1970s before the U.S. could officially send ambassadors. He had been director of the CIA. Among his campaign promises was a promise of no new taxes. And it seemed like a very hopeful time in America and in the world. Communism was collapsing around the world, uh, or at least many parts of it. Likewise, many Latin American countries were developing more democratic governments. Although, in Panama, this only took place with American help after George Bush sent 12,000 troops into Panama to overthrow the, uh, President Manuel Noriega in 1989. He had been supported by the U.S. Um, in the mid-1980s financially. He had also financed himself by drug smuggling. But um, in 1987, he had suspended the Constitution, going from an elected president to a military dictator. And now the Cold War was ending, we no longer needed him, and pushed him out of power um, and helped a democratic government um, to rule Panama. South Africa. Um, which had come to receive criticism from around the world for its strict system of racial segregation, known as apartheid, um, finally caved in to domestic and international pressure, um, ending that apartheid and allowing black people to vote for the first time in their election of 1994, electing Nelson Mandela as the first black president of South Africa. And even a major world crisis seemed an opportunity for hope. Um, as um, countries around the world, um, the United States, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, including the Soviet Union, um, allied with Middle Eastern countries, both Muslim countries and their traditional enemy, Israel, in a U.S.-led coalition to defend Kuwait. Now, the tiny Middle Eastern country of Kuwait had once been part of the Ottoman Empire's province of Basra, um, long ago before the British carved it off in the late 1800s. Basra, in turn, had become part of the country of Iraq when it became independent from the Ottoman Empire. And Iraq wanted the oil-rich province of Kuwait back. They also accused Kuwait of slant drilling, um, drilling oil wells under the border to pull oil out of Iraqi territory. Um, furthermore, Iraq was deep in debt to Kuwait following Iraq's long-running war with Iran. And so, in 1990, under the leadership of Saddam Hussein, uh, who the U.S. had supported against Iran, um, Iraq invaded Kuwait, um, quickly seizing the country in 1990. The United States said that if this was ignored, it would be an act of appeasement. And from there, Saddam Hussein would surely go on to invade other oil-rich countries around him, such as Saudi Arabia. Um, and the U.S., at the Saudis' invitation, sent troops to defend Saudi Arabia in what is known as Operation Desert Shield. And George Bush went to the United Nations. Um, and interacted diplomatically with many countries, building a coalition of 34 countries with a United Nations mandate to push Iraq out of Kuwait. Um, in bombing and in invading Iraq itself in Operation Desert Storm early in 1991. Um, Iraq was quickly pushed out of Kuwait. Um, but Saddam Hussein was not overthrown, as it was felt that would destabilize Iraq and the region too much. However, um, an embargo was imposed on Iraq afterwards, and large parts of northern and southern Iraq were declared to be no-fly zones, where Iraq could not send warplanes 
and when on occasion they did, the U.S. would shoot them down at different points in the 1990s. In particular, this allowed an ethnic group in northern Iraq, known as the Kurds, um, to become relatively independent um, following some earlier attempts in which Saddam Hussein used the army and even poison gas to repress them. And well, President Bush said that the unity that came from this Gulf War, in which even the Soviet Union supported the coalition without officially joining it, putting the U.S. and the Soviets on the same side, was an opportunity, he said, to build a new world order, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, more secure in the quest for peace, an era in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. As the 1990s began, it truly seemed possible. Indeed, by 1992, the Cold War was over, the Soviet Union having dissolved. The day after Christmas, 1991, there was now only one superpower left, and it was us. And following the Persian Gulf War, um, President Bush was popular with an 89% approval rating. But pretty soon things would turn bad in a number of ways. For one thing, after a couple decades of relatively little outright racial violence, at least on a large scale, um, in April of 1992, um, a black man named Rodney King um, was pulled over by the police in a routine traffic stop um, and then badly beaten um, in an unprovoked attack by four white police officers. And it is known that it was unprovoked because one of the police cars had a camera on the dashboard filming the entire thing. The four police officers were tried, um, but a jury with no black members, 10 white jurors, one Latino juror, and one Asian American, acquitted all four white officers. Infuriating, um, many black people in Los Angeles and riots broke out. Um, as black people and also Latinos in Los Angeles, who often felt mistreated by the police, set fires and looted and destroyed shops across Los Angeles, many of them targeted small neighborhood stores owned by Asian Americans, particularly Korean Americans in Los Angeles, many black people resenting um, that folks they saw as outsiders um, often had the only store in black neighborhoods. 53 people were killed, 2,000 were injured during the riots, which lasted six days, until eventually the National Guard, the Army, and the Marines were sent in um, to end the riots. Later, another investigation was held. Two of the officers were found guilty um, of uh, the beating of Rodney King. And, although on a much uh, less dramatic scale, racial tension also surrounded the rise of rap music, which first appeared in, the in 1979 or around there, but was becoming much more popular in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Some did openly glorify gang violence or violence against the police. The song Cop Killer was not very popular um, with the police. Um, but um, not all of it um, glorified such violence, but because it was a style that had originated among uh, black musicians, and most of the famous rappers were black, um, certainly some, much of the mistrust was racial, just as had been the case with jazz um, or rock and roll earlier in the century. Um, and there was a growing sense of dissatisfaction with the U.S. government, dating back at least to uh, Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon. And this dissatisfaction was expressed in a largely symbolic but somewhat interesting way in the ratification of the 27th Amendment in 1992. A very simple amendment saying that no law varying the compensation for the services of senators or representatives shall take effect until an election of representatives shall have intervened. In other words, if Congress votes themselves a pay raise, they can't enjoy it till after the next election. So if you're really mad your congressman gave him a pay raise, you can vote him out before he gets to enjoy it. What makes this amendment um, also interesting is that it was written by James Madison, 
um, and back in 1789 as one of the 12 proposed amendments for the Bill of Rights. Of those 12 amendments, 10 had been ratified almost immediately, but um, what became the 27th Amendment kind of hung around with one state ratifying it every now and then um, until after 203 years, it had finally been ratified by enough states to become part of the U.S. Constitution. And as um, a sign of protest um, against the government. And part of this desire to limit congressional pay um, came from the fact that the American economy was suffering another recession, due in part to the savings and loan crisis. Furthermore, um, the budget deficit that had grown um, during Reagan's arms race with the Soviets and due to earlier government spending too, um, and paying off the savings and loan scandals, FDIC claims, um, it was an issue. Many people felt the deficit should be cut, including Bush. But um, in order to reduce the deficit, he would have to raise taxes. It being felt even then that if we were going to make money, um, we had to actually find it somewhere. And so in 1990, uh, Bush signed a law creating new taxes, breaking his famous campaign promise from 1988. Um, however, this did reduce, even if not completely eliminate, the deficit. So after this, uh, which was probably an appropriate economic decision, we were going into debt more slowly. But the recession, um, racial tensions, and Bush breaking his campaign promise all worked against him when he ran for re-election in 1992, even being challenged um, by conservatives in his own party for the nomination. The Democrats, um, after uh, a big primary season, nominated um, someone largely unknown outside his home state of Arkansas, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton, um, who, if elected, would be the first baby boomer president the first president in many years not to be a World War II veteran, or a veteran of any kind, as he had used his connections to avoid service in the Vietnam War, and had protested against the war while studying overseas. Um, he had even used marijuana, although he said that while he tried it, he had not inhaled, um, something many people questioned. Also controversial about Bill Clinton was his wife, Hillary Clinton, um, who was a career woman. She had worked as a lawyer for many years, indeed at some points making more money than her husband when he was a politician, um, and she a high-priced lawyer. She was certainly not the typical demure first lady of the past. Um, in an interview, she said, I've done the best I can to lead my life. I suppose I could have stayed home and baked cookies and had teas, which some people saw as insulting to women in America who had chosen to stay home. Um, although others, of course, celebrated her independence. The Clintons themselves presented her as such a skilled politician that if you elected Bill, you would get Hillary too, and a two-for-one deal for the presidency. And there is a major third-party candidate, Texas billionaire Ross Perot, who promised to reform the government, balance the budget, and protect American jobs um, by keeping tariffs high. Um, he was very popular. At one point, more popular than Bush or Clinton. Um, he bought um, advertising time. Indeed, had a number of 30-minute television programs in which he explained his policies with graphs, and people tuned in to listen to him and watch his graphs. So popular was Ross Perot. He was even allowed to participate in the televised presidential debates, the only third-party candidate ever allowed to do so. And many people felt that he won the first debate, at least. However, he later withdrew from the race, officially saying it's because he did not want the race thrown into the House of Representatives. Um, although I think, too, he kind of... Um, was surprised unpleasantly by all the attention that got focused on the private lives of presidential candidates, um, and as he saw it, the harassment of his family, too. Later, he changed his mind and announced he was running, um, but his indecision had ruined his chances. Um, but he did take many votes, about 19% of the popular vote from both parties, 
although it was generally felt he took more votes from Bush than from Clinton and may have been a deciding factor in Clinton's victory, although some historians have, have questioned that assumption. In any case, in the election of 1992, Clinton was elected, um, although with only 43% of the popular vote, only winning a majority of the popular vote in Washington, D.C., in his home state of Arkansas, but he got 370 electoral votes, including winning a number of southern states, the last major Democratic candidate to do so um, for a long time. And Clinton um, and many of his supporters described themselves as new Democrats, saying they're more interested in pragmatism than ideology, um, demonstrating a turn away from the liberal policies of the New Deal and especially the Great Society, claiming he wanted to limit the government, um, a sign perhaps of a more conservative sixth two-party system in which both Republicans and Democrats took on at least more conservative rhetoric. Um, he promised welfare reform, and he supported um, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which had originally been negotiated by George Bush, but which Clinton carried through. Ross Perot had opposed this plan, saying he would hear a great sucking sound of American investment and jobs going into Mexico. Um, indeed, many manufacturing jobs did move to Mexico where labor costs were lower after NAFTA went into effect on January 1st, 1994. Although all three countries as a whole grew richer even if the wealth was not evenly distributed. Although, while Clinton was much more moderate um, than some Democrats before him, um, that didn't mean he was completely opposed, um, completely opposed to liberal policies. He wanted to end the long-standing ban of homosexuals serving in the U.S. military, although he eventually was forced to compromise, following a lot of criticism, to a don't ask, don't tell policy in which homosexual people could legally serve in the military as long as they didn't tell anybody that they were gay. Uh, many liberals said this didn't go far enough or indeed didn't go very far at all, but some conservatives criticized it for undermining traditional values. Some men in the military at the time said while they'd showered with all the other soldiers in our union for decades, it felt different the day after this was passed. Uh, but conservative pressure later um, led Clinton to support the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996, specifically defining marriage as being between one man and one woman um, under federal law. Clinton supported the Brady Bill, a gun control law passed in 1993, um, named after Ronald Reagan's press secretary, Jim Brady, who had been paralyzed after being shot during the assassination attempt on Reagan in 1981. A limited gun control law, but a gun control law nonetheless. One of the major early plans of Bill and Hillary Clinton was health care reform, um, hoping to require all Americans to enroll in some health care plan, forbidding insurance companies from dropping people from their insurance until they had already switched to a new plan. Hillary Clinton was put in charge of promoting this idea to the American people, and it came to be known as Hillary Care. It would also have regulated prices and insurance coverage and allowed people with low incomes to get insurance for free. It was opposed by many conservatives, certainly by libertarians opposed to government spending, the insurance and medical industries heavily opposed it and waged a successful campaign against it, saying it would raise costs and lower the quality of health care in the U.S. And also Hillary Clinton was not very successful in presenting it to the public. Um, while very personable and private, she often does not come across very well while campaigning in public. And these liberal policies, don't ask, don't tell, gun control, Hillary uh, care, made the Clintons and the Democrats very unpopular. Um, so that in the midterm elections of 1994, uh, the Republicans saw a chance um, to regain power. And 
create a series of promises, a contract with America, promising tax cuts, welfare cuts, business deregulation, increased military spending after declining military spending following the end of the Cold War, and a balanced budget. It also promoted term limits, um, saying that no one should serve in Congress for too long, although it turned out that when many of the Republicans elected this year reached the time they had promised to retire at, they ran for re-election anyway. This, though, was a very popular program, uh, and resents, resentment of the Clintons was very high, so that Republicans um, took control of the House of Representatives for the first time since 1954, with 54 seats changing hands and Newt Gingrich being chosen as Speaker of the House of Representatives. Um, Republicans also gained control of the Senate, uh, gaining six seats there and controlling the Senate for the first time since 1986, indeed one of the few times um, since the New Deal. The, the first time since 1952 that Republicans controlled a majority of both houses of Congress. They also gained a majority um, of the governor's mansions across the country, a political change known as the Republican Revolution. The revolution so powerful that many conservative Southern Democrats um, who had supported some Republican policies at the national level, at least since the days of Richard Nixon, um, openly switched parties in 1994 so that many Southerners who could never have voted for the party of Lincoln at last joined the party of Lincoln in 1994. And this public pressure and congressional pressure would cause Clinton to abandon many of his more liberal policies and really become the more moderate and pragmatic leader that he had said he would be when just finding a new Democrat. Um, in particular, um, he would take popular Republican ideas and make them his own, um, co-opting what public opinion polls suggested the people would like. He, he was very careful to use public opinion polls, um, a process he called triangulation, to find out what everyone wanted and then find just the right spot to take advantage of that politically. And many people, both liberal and conservative, criticized him for this, again saying that he wasn't following any particular beliefs. Again, as a new Democrat, he wanted to do what worked without being held back by traditional ideologies. And it did work. Clinton would be the first Democrat since Franklin Roosevelt to serve two full terms of his own. Something many people had not predicted. Uh, not only had the Democrats been badly beaten in 1994, but the new world order had not been as orderly as President Bush had hoped. Indeed, President Bush had sent troops, um, American troops, into Somalia in 1992 to support a UN mission providing humanitarian aid to people caught in the middle of a civil war, which had begun when the Soviet-backed dictatorship there had collapsed after the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, however, um, following attacks on American troops in Somalia uh, in October of 1993 that shot down two Black Hawk helicopters, killing 18 Americans and four other Allied soldiers, along with many Somali uh, civilians caught in the crossfire or used as human shields. The bodies of the dead soldiers were then mutilated and dragged through the streets. Um, and this, this was photographed and filmed and seen in America. Um, although all the bodies were eventually returned, as was one soldier captured alive. But some people questioned Bush's decisions to send troops to Somalia um, but by the time the Black Hawk helicopters were shut, shot down, Bill Clinton was president and got most of the blame. And while communism had ended peacefully in most of Europe, that was not the case in Yugoslavia, a land um, of many different ethnic and religious groups loosely held together, uncomfortably held together, um, by the um, communist dictatorship that had governed for years, and before that by the repressive kings of uh, Somalia, or Yugoslavia, who were really the kings of Serbia. In 1991, though, Yugoslavia began to break up, uh, at first into Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, and Macedonia, 
with other regions trying to win their independence too, in the Yugoslav Wars. The place that would suffer worst would be the region known as Bosnia and Herzegovina, which declared independence in 1992. But whereas most of the other regions trying to separate from Yugoslavia were made up primarily of one ethnic group, Bosnia was fairly mixed between three different Slavic groups, so closely related in some ways that they were believed to speak a single language until the late 20th century, when it became politically desirable to claim they were separate languages. It just sounded a whole lot alike. But religiously and historically, they were different. The three primary groups um, to fight in the Bosnian Wars um, were ethnic Bosnians, a primarily Muslim group dating back to the days the Ottoman Empire controlled southeastern Europe, as well as the Croats, uh, a primarily Catholic group who had once been ruled over by the Austrian Empire, and, the, and Serbs, um, a primarily Orthodox group. Eastern Orthodox, uh, and who had controlled the region um, since the early 20th century. Um, and so these three groups fought for control of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the bloody Bosnian Wars, which were characterized by ethnic cleansing, um, meant to be a nice word for genocide, as the Serbians and Croatians killed as many of each other and as many of the Bosniaks as they could. Bosniaks killed when they could, but um, were much less prepared. So that hundreds of thousands, primarily Bosniaks, um, between 200,000 and 400,000, about one in 12 um, ethnic Bosnians, died during the wars, and many killed because of their ethnicity, um, especially in the town of Srebrenica, where many were buried in mass graves. Um, and in these Bosnian wars, the Bosnian Croats and Bosnian Serbs had support from Croatia and uh, Serbia. Eventually, NATO stepped in, um, sending forces, primarily airstrikes, to try to protect the Bosniaks. And finally, um, under U.S. leadership, the Dayton Peace Accords were negotiated in 1995, bringing an end to the fighting in Bosnia. Um, although still not creating an especially um, unified country. Um, and um, thanks in part to Clinton's support for some conservative ideas like welfare reform, reducing welfare payments and requiring welfare recipients to seek work, um, as well as um, his support for NAFTA, and support for increased trade with China, despite opposition based on China's abuse of human rights, there was a huge increase in international trade, um, in part due to investment in new technology like mobile phones and the internet, so that the economy boomed during most of Clinton's time in office. There were some small tax increases, um, which did lead to conflict with the Republicans, which created a government shutdown in December of 1995 and January of 1996, which many people blamed on the Republicans. The economic boom um, and the tax increases um, eventually led to a balanced budget and even a budget surplus by the end of Clinton's presidency, the U.S. government making more money than it spent for the first time in a long time. Um, but, Clinton's presidency, especially the second term, um, was dominated by the scandals of his personal life. Even when he was running for president the first time in 1992, a woman named Jennifer Flowers claimed she had had a long-term affair with Bill Clinton, but Clinton denied it. In 1994, though, um, a former Arkansas state employee named Paula Jones began a civil suit against Bill Clinton saying he had tried to pressure her into a sexual relationship back in 1991 while he was governor of Arkansas, and so she indirectly worked for him. Eventually, this case reached the U.S. Supreme Court, and other women with whom Clinton had allegedly had affairs were called in to testify, saying they'd had affairs with him or been pressured into having affairs, um, particularly using his power of gov as governor of Arkansas to put pressure on them. 
And one woman who would eventually testify was a young White House intern named Monica Lewinsky, who, who said she had had a sexual relationship with President Clinton. Clinton denied this, eventually saying under oath that he never had sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. Later said something similar on national television. Until Monica Lewinsky produced a dress with DNA evidence on it, which one would think you would take to the dry cleaners, but apparently she needed a souvenir. This was introduced into the trial, proving that at the very least, Clinton had committed perjury, lying under oath about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky. Now, as far as Paula Jones went, Clinton eventually settled out of court, paying $850,000 to end the civil case, although most of that went to her lawyers rather than her. He later paid an additional $91,000 in fees and fines for contempt of court for giving misleading evidence. But having committed perjury in describing his relationship with Monica Lewinsky, the House of Representatives chose to impeach Bill Clinton for perjury and for obstruction of justice in 1998, the first president since Andrew Johnson to be impeached. But like Andrew Johnson, he was acquitted in 1999, um, not receiving the two-thirds majority needed to be removed from office. Forty-five senators voted to impeach him for perjury, 50 for obstruction of justice, um, and not enough to remove him from office, but certainly enough that the dignity of the presidency, already badly hurt by Nixon, was diminished even further. And so, when his second term was up, and his vice president, Al Gore Jr., a former senator and son of a former senator from Tennessee, won the Democratic nomination to run for the presidency in the year 2000, he did not ask Clinton to campaign with him or for him, because many Americans were disgusted by Clinton, although many still, su still supported Clinton and resented Gore's rejection of his help. Gore's opponent, George W. Bush, um, governor of Texas and son of former President George H.W. Bush, could now say he was running for the presidency to restore morality and dignity to the office.